Okay. Just taking a short um, break, going over um, questions on on uh, YouTube here. Now, some of these ones, <clears throat> sorry, some of these ones Jen gets back to, uh, and some of them I get back to. I read every single one of them, so um, you know, I don't want anybody to think that I don't sit down and read them and go over them and understand uh, what's happening. Um, hmm. A little snack, a little tea. And uh, because I read every single one of them, um, I can get a really good idea of what kinds of uh, people are sort of attracted here. And the questions and comments and things that come in, I'm able to uh, sort of either be really close to or at the very least keep my finger on the pulse for. And so I thought I would do, I'm just taking this short break. I've got a um, bunch of stuff going on. Hopefully a decent video planned today. It snowed last night, so we got an extra, it's just an inch of snow, but it's still, it just adds that layer of wetness around here. Absolutely beautiful though, so not complaining too much. Um, but I thought I would do a uh, quick Q&A because there are so many comments that have been building up over the last uh, week or so that uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to. I really do need to get the, uh, the, the question. I've tried to get the questions answered in a timely manner and, um, and not leave them too long, but it's hard because there's more and more. So uh, so that's why Jen helps. She assists in, in saying hello and thank you for commenting. And we really do appreciate everybody's stories and their thoughts and and their thank yous and their greetings and their your welcomes and all kinds of things. We're, we're trying very hard to just build a really nice uh, community where everybody feels like sharing and it's a safe place to do so. Uh, so far, it's gone really well. Um, we've kept out, I mean, there's only been maybe, I mean, in internet words, you know, a few trolls out there, a few people that have sort of tried to bring negativity, um, but they either, they don't seem to stick around. They don't... Um, it's fascinating, to be honest, because uh, uh, you see a lot of channels out there that are stuck with these trolls, these people that dislike them and putting in comments and then and then the person feels like they need to make an email or not an email, make a, a video about all the emails they get that are, that are beating them down and telling them they're a bad person or they're doing things the wrong way or they're whatever. We don't get that. Um, literally, I mean, I think I did a video a while back because we got a couple in over a period of about a month. And I thought, oh, geez, have we attracted these people finally? And um, but it stopped there; it completely stopped. So, um, so anyway, so I thought uh, I really do want to get back to you guys for the questions that you have here. I've got my computer I'm taking a break, going over some of the questions that I get, but some of them it takes a while to sort of type it out. So if I can, I mean, it's going to take almost as long to talk about it too, I guess, but. I feel like maybe it would convey uh, better and easier if I make a video about it. Because <clears throat> I can sort of talk about the different situations that may happen. One of the questions, a recent question that came up, uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh wait, anybody saying anything cool? Sorry, let me just check comments. Oh, everybody's saying hello. Hello everybody. The usual crowd is joining. Good morning. It's early Friday morning there. It is noon uh, on Thursday here. So, uh, hi from California. Nancy says hi. Casey Endurance says hi. Maureen says hi. And David, hello, David. I got your email, if you're watching right now still, from you and Pike. Uh, I will get back to you. I see your phone number's in there. So, absolutely. I mean... The answer is yes, sure. Let me just figure things out. Uh, timing wise, I mean, there's just, I'll tell you about it. We'll talk. We'll chit chat. Okay, uh, the question. Do you, do you, oh, wait, any more? Ohio. Hi, Angie. Danielle, good to see you. Um, good. Okay, everybody said hello. Hello to you too. Okay, so a question that's coming in. <clears throat> um, the video that I just put up 
uh, regarding um, the lady, a lady getting uh, hurt. She sent an, an email, a lovely email, as I read to you guys. And it's not the first. I've got a few. I haven't asked permission to share. I feel like it's a little intrusive, but this particular lady seemed very, uh, very open. And, um, and she said yes, so I was able to share it. I really love the feedback. There's a lot of stories coming in how people have broken their arms or got hurt or hurt from somebody that got hurt. And uh, the idea of how to sort of get past that fear because uh, I don't know anybody who isn't afraid of horses. Yeah. Um, and uh, except for the ones that don't know any better yet. They don't know any better yet. Okay. Uh, anyways, great. Uh, uh, a great response from everybody. Very much appreciated. And uh, the, the, the lady was, was very thankful. Um, and uh, I look forward to hearing back from her uh, in the future. Okay. So first, I'm finally going to... Okay, one more little check here. Hi, Debbie. You're here. Very good. Uh, four hours behind the Maritimes. Yes, actually, we're on uh, Pacific time. Um, almost the slowest time on the planet. Uh, I think Hawaii is the slowest or the latest, whatever. So yes, way, way over on the East Coast, you guys are three, four hours ahead of time. Um, so Tina's from England. Cool, cool. We've got people from all over the... That's one thing that Jen said to me. She says it's absolutely amazing because we've been able to create this community. I mean, we have our own community here locally. We have a whole pile of people. We've got more and more volunteers coming through, uh, people that are just interested in coming to hang out. But that's a very local community. But we also have a very global community of, and, and you know, it's not just us. There's a bunch of good YouTube channels out there or Facebook groups or stuff or, or whatever that, that bring together these people of like mind that are just, we're all working towards sort of being safer, healthier, better for the horse, more positive, uh, progressive and moving forward and stuff. So <clears throat> anyways, uh, I'm going to go over a question that I wanted to talk about because it's sort of a, it's a big one, but it's a good one. It's a really good one. Um, so I'll read it out. And uh, uh, this girl, it's 13 hours ago, so it's a very recent uh, question. And uh, it was posted on the video of the first three steps of groundwork. If none of you have checked out the first three steps of groundwork, if you ever meet me and you say, hey, I want to do something with horses, I will probably lead you through this. <laughs> so a good video to watch. And uh, it's quite popular. It's getting, getting on quite fine. <clears throat> There's also the next three steps of groundwork after that one. I did the first one with Luke, the second one with uh, Lena. If you see me looking that way, it's because I'm waiting for the mailman to come because I've got this uh, really good book coming. I'm very excited. Um, so, uh, sidetracked again. Okay, so, uh, question. She says, um, I'm having some problems with my horse. I think just about everybody is. You're always going to have something. It's okay. No problem. He's very busy and throws his head. Hey, we got one of those. <laughs> He mostly has a problem with his head and mouth. He's very nippy and impatient. Uh, I actually just had to deal with a horse just like that. Um, yesterday? No. Day before. Yeah. Um, so I'll tell you about that in a minute. Another story to tell. Uh, I can't pet him on his face without him nipping me. I tried backing him up or smacking him when he bit me or tried to push on me, but he just got more reactive. <clears throat> Some days are worse than others. I just don't know what to do, and I'm stumped. Okay, uh, th th this problem or this question has a whole pile of stuff going on. Um, and uh, when I'm looking down, I'm looking at my computer, in case you're wondering. I'm not staring at the dog, who's also right down here. In case you're curious, Zeus is here as well. Okay. With all of his toys hanging around with him. So... Um, Zeus is hanging out with me. He's always with me. Okay, but I'm very comfortable and warm inside right now. I think it's about one degree outside or something. Uh, not chewing on his toy. Okay, so um, this question is huge. It's a really, really big one. And there are a lot of horses out there that are impatient, fidgety, throw their head, bite, paw the ground. Um, wander off, pull you around. Uh, I was dealing with another horse the other day where uh, you go to um, 
graze the horse? She's just grazing around. You're just literally just standing there with them while they're trying to eat grass. And uh, the horse just starts wandering and pulling on the lead rope and stuff like that. <clears throat> and, you know, it's, it's another problem with the horses. And so when, when you get, when you get these issues, the, the funny thing is that they're, they're all the same. It's all pretty much the same problem. And the problem, the problem is the horse, your horse or that horse, the horse that you're with, in their mind, they're thinking um, that there, it is an option to ask you to do something or tell you to do something or demand you to do something um, or not even ask or demand or question or anything. They just, they just do it. So many, many instances. Um, and the uh, funny thing is uh, Springer was kind of like this. And uh, um, Zeus, don't play with your toy right now. No. You guys hear the squeaky squeaky? No. What a dork. And this thing is so gross. It is the slimiest, grossest, stinkiest toy ever because he loves it so much. Okay, back back to the question. So what, what you have um, in this situation is a horse that considers it an option. Oh. I don't even know if I can help it. I mean, it's just sort of adorable. He doesn't continue for long though, so. Um, you have a horse that considers the, the idea that they can tell you what to do. That is the base problem for so many things. So many, um, uh, so many problems, like the, the, the things that come up. Because, oh yeah, so that's what I was going to say. I was going to tell you a story about Springer. When Springer came, he was, it's not like he's a bad, mean, rude, nothing horse. He's not anything. He's actually an amazing horse. Zeus? No. Let's see, if I tell him no, he actually gets riled up and wants to do it more. Can I have that? Oh, good boy. Lie down. This is, this is my dog right now. Yeah. What? <laughs> Look, the camera won't even focus on you. It's all blurry. There. Okay, whatever. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta answer the questions, buddy. I, I don't have time right now. Anybody who has a dog will understand. No, 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 don't play with that. No, no, I'm grabbing it just to, let it go, let it go. Let it go. Drop it. Look at this thing. <laughs> it's so gross. Uh, all right. So um, back to the, the problem. So, uh, so the question, right? We'll go back to, he's very busy. He throws his head. He has a problem with his head and mouth. Um, he's nippy and impatient. So, uh, uh, you know, young horses can be kind of impatient. They can sort of, um, you know, lack the concentration at times. Uh, but I would also question the thought process that these, these even these babies, one, two, three-year-old, they can concentrate pretty hard when they need to, when they're told to, when their mother says so, when the geldings around the, the, the pasture say so. They'll stay in line. So I've always kind of questioned that idea that that they can't uh, concentrate. So I'm not sold on that, but I do have an understanding that some horses just start to mentally check out. It's just like, oh, I can't handle it, whatever that may be. Um, but that said, though, I mean, the, the, for anything that's older than, say, three or four, you should be able to get a minimum of half an hour out of them, I think. I believe my experience says so. <clears throat> and what I've experienced and what I've been taught says so. So um, nippy and impatient isn't to do so much with the fact that they can't concentrate for longer than a gnat. You know, the, the attention span of a flea or something that people say. I bet fleas are probably pretty good at paying attention to stuff. You know, 
Who knows? But they look busy. And so when the horse gets busy and they start acting impatient, um, you know, uh, it, it essentially, mentally, they're saying, I want to go do something else. You know, why do I have to be here with you? I don't want to be with you. In fact, I can be with you, but let's go. And so they're trying to get you to do something, trying to get you to stop doing something, trying to whatever. In their mind, they think that this is a possibility. And so um, that needs to be addressed. So all of these things, nip being impatient, cat and pet him on the face without him nipping me, try to back him up, smack him. Uh, short break here while I answer this really quick one. Um, smacking a horse after they've done something generally has, I'd say 95% of the time has no effect, um, no positive effect. And the reason is because they already got it done. They already did it. It's like, it's like giving your kid a lot of trouble because they ate a cookie. And like, well, you already ate the cookie, so I guess you got away with it. You know, you, they get trouble, but what's the worst that could happen? You know, it's that age old, old saying of, uh, it's easier to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. <laughs> but maybe that's more of a human thing. But the bottom line is, if a horse has done something to you, whether they, they, they've bit you, they've kicked you, they've pushed you over, any of those things that happened were already happening up here for them to do it. So you're late. You, uh, any type of punishment, <laughs> I'm doing karate hands, um, is late. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't teach them something by swiping or you know having them get out of your safety what I call a safety circle. So if a horse has bit you and you're like, bam, and you punch them or slap them or whatever, you really are saying, get out of my safety circle. You've just finished hurting me and I'm not cool with that. If they do respond to this, then you actually have to reward it. Um, and that's going to be a very, very strange concept to many people who will probably listen to this and say, what are you talking about? But I can tell you that it is very, very well received by horses. So, um, <clears throat> so the first thing I would say is don't don't bother smacking unless you literally feel like your your safety is encroached upon, and you need and there's no other way to get that horse out. But if you're doing it as sort of retribution or or not revenge, but sort of a a punitive measure, like I'm gonna punch you because you bit me, uh, you know you're not gonna get anywhere. You won't feel good inside. Still my internet connection. My internet connection died briefly. I'm back. At least it's not crashing. Okay. Um, so so that's the smacking part. Um, so solve that. Uh, tried backing him up. Great. Keep doing it. Keep backing him up. Um, he got more reactive. Okay. So uh, I'll read that sentence one more time. I tried backing him up or smacking him when he bit me or tried to push on me, but he just got more reactive. So, um, and then some days are worse than others. I don't know what to do. So that's okay. It's okay. It's okay to know not to not know what to do. You're doing something. You're asking a question to somebody who may have an answer. I might have the answer. Uh, maybe I don't. So the, the next thing is that's a big question. See, that's why I can't type this thing out. Um, the next thing that I would say is yes, backing up, backing them up is a great idea, but you must do it with good timing and good release. I tell this to everybody I teach, everybody that I that will can be bothered to listen to what I have to say. It is never the pressure that teaches a horse, ever, never. It's the release. So. If you're backing your horse and you're doing it with frustration or fear, mostly fear, mostly we feel fear. So we might get angry, we might get frustrated, we might get uh, temperamental, all these things. If you back them with really good timing, calmly, say, hey, not cool, man, back up. And they back up, you'd better pet them. Bring them down. Because then the next thing we have to think about is why? 
why are they asking you to move? Why are they asking you out of their space? Why, when you go to pet them, they're not just reaching in with their face and saying, do it some more. I was just with Vincent this morning going to scratch him and, and he's directing where my hand should go. A very different um, result of, of past experiences with me and other people. So the next question you have to ask yourself is why? Why is your horse saying, get away? Why is your horse saying, move? Why is your horse saying, um, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not cool with that. I'm going to bite you. I, I, I hate it so much, I'm going to hurt you. It's not natural for, for, for that to be for a nice, you know, happy, symbiotic relationship. So I would say, you know, when you're doing this, and I've answered this question, this type of question many times to other people, um, horsemanship is 100% about being uh, patient, uh, you know, firm, but very kind and reassuring. The more your horse feels safe, the more it will stop trying to drive you and will try to draw you. Every time I walk by Lena, Vincent, Luke, sometimes Peggy, not usually macaroni, sometimes macaroni, sometimes Gracie, sometimes Ruli, and so, you know, sometimes Spring, I get all of them. There will be, they will try to draw me, mostly for scratches, right? You know, just, yeah, I'll scratch you here. So I'm meeting a need of theirs. They're like, oh, hey, you're a scratchy scratch guy. Okay. <clears throat> so what you want is your horse to try to draw you. And you also want to be able to have that draw. If they're trying to draw me, it means that I've got a draw. They're like, I want that. Get over here. So horsemanship is a lot about that. You have to shoot for that. Um, it's easy to drive a horse, so easy to drive a horse. All you got to do is be loud and big and scary. Horses get scared so easy. They're scaredy cats all the time. So this question is a really big one. How long? It's taken me 20 minutes to give an answer for something I never could have typed out. But now I just got to click a, here, go to this, go to this link. Ah, look, this is my, oh, it's backwards. You're never going to, if you can read that. From the girls, Father's Day gift, my favorite cup. So, um, so all of these things, if we think about everything that I talked about, having problems with a horse, he's busy and throws his head, you know, start getting him thinking about um, being quiet and being drawn. If he's busy and throwing his head, he wants to be somewhere else. Mostly has a problem with the head of his mouth, he's very nippy and impatient. Nippy is awful. If your horse is close enough to you that it can nip you, it's too close. Back them up. Horses like that, I refer to as non-graduates to close communication. So I would have them four feet back. And if they were still just, you know, edging in on me and stuff, I put them five feet, six feet, seven feet back. And when they can be quiet out there and be okay out there, which I will reward at every opportunity I can, they get to graduate to coming closer. If they come in closer and suddenly they're kind of going like that, you know, either you know, they just sort of nip at your arm or come down to your leg or something like that, get back out. You don't get the comfort anymore. You know, the comfort of being close. They want to be close. The herd animals, especially if you feel safe and strong. So nippy means get away. You tried backing them up. Good. Keep backing them up. Back them up with good timing and release and reassurance for just whatever you can do, reward everything that you can. Look for every possible positive thing that they do and tell them they did a good job. I can't, I can't stress that enough. There was, um, there was a video a long while back that I watched by Buck Brenneman <clears throat> and he was explaining something. I can't remember what it was. Um, something about uh, telling a horse they're being good. And... He, he, he started petting the horse and he, he said, you just can't do this enough. You can't do enough of this. And I didn't really clue in at the time I watched it years ago. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, all right. Pet the horse a lot. Got it, no problem. And I too can't stress enough how much it means to them to give them that positive feeling. And not only that, what he didn't include 
is that it's really good for us. It feels really good. It feels peaceful. You feel better. And when you feel better, the horse feels better. When the horse feels better, you you get the idea, right? So that that was my um that's my answer, my 25 minute long answer to this one question, a ba non-basic basic question. It's a small question, but it's a big question. Um <clears throat> Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that makes some sense. I don't know. I think it does. So, okay, let's see what we got. I think I saw a bunch of comments going by. So now I've got to, okay, there's got to be a better way to do this. Hang on. <sighs> let's see. Let's mute my computer so I don't have to listen to me. Uh, view the channel. Live streams on now. Well, there I am sitting in my living room. Okay, let's go up in questions here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, how did you get over your fear of horses? Asks Nancy. That's a great question. Uh, when I started uh, riding, I had a really good teacher. Um, I don't recall ever doing any real groundwork. I don't recall doing much that involved... Um, what I would do now for people. It doesn't mean she did anything wrong. Obviously, I'm where I'm at because I'm where I'm at um, for the things that I've done, the history and, and things that we did together. <clears throat> um, so I would recommend that. But uh, for me, uh, it, it, was, it was pretty... I was pretty scared. I was really worried. I, I thought for sure I'd fall off. I thought for sure I would get bucked off. I thought for sure... Uh, I would get, I would put push into a fence. We did enough lessons that I ended up getting to doing some jumping. We ended up doing, uh, I think, a foot and a half or so. It wasn't much. I think we got up to two feet. I did okay, but my timing sucked. But I kept trying, and we did a lot of trail rides. Uh, so my um, my experience to get over the fear may be a lot different than other people. Uh, that have been actually hurt. I've never been hurt by a horse before then. And even then I didn't. So I'm not saying I did then. Um, <clears throat> but my my fear was overcome through uh, acclimation uh, slowly. Walking. Lots of walking on a nice, quiet horse in a nice, quiet location. Uh, so as that sort of grew, I started to kind of like it a little bit more. Um, I was terrible with feet, couldn't pick up feet, feet up and, and, and clean them. I was too scared. It took me over a year, probably, to be even remotely comfortable with picking up back feet. So uh, I'm always very sensitive to people who say, oh, I, I don't know. I'm so, I get so, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to pick up their feet or, you know, it scares me. <clears throat> you have every valid reason. It goes against all all common sense to pick up a horse's foot they're strong and they're fast and even to this day uh, i was trimming a horse the other day and and uh somebody came around the corner just came around the corner and when somebody comes around the corner they want their foot back fast because um, they might need to run away so something to consider always be careful and aware um, learn the proper positions to put your body in to save yourself from that kind of um risk so uh, yeah, so my fear was, was I got over my fear through just, uh, you know, careful and proper training and teaching and acclimation to quiet horse, quiet environment. And then, I guess this particular teacher thought I was ready for it, and I was thrown into the deep end. We went off on this big, huge trail ride, and we went up this massive switchback. If you don't know what a switchback is, is essentially we, we go up the hill, but because the hill is so steep, it has to go this way, then this way, then this way, then this way. Then <laughs> You get the idea. And the turns are 90 degrees. And uh, I thought for sure I was going to die. I thought, this is the worst. Why did you do this to me? And I was so scared. But I made it. And I was exhilarated. And that was all I talked about for the next week. It doesn't mean I haven't fallen off since then or hurt myself or been rubbed up against a tree or crap like that, but keep building on what you can. 
Casey Endurance says, do you think that the reason Baby Gracie acts that way she does or did might be because of her previous owner? Maybe she gave more affection than groundwork. Uh, Gracie had uh, no groundwork before my understanding. Uh, no groundwork before me, other than just basic leading, basic handling and stuff. Um, obviously, she was relatively halterable and, and whatnot. Um, but her owner was pretty old and, uh, you know, she passed away before she could figure out what to do with the herd that she had. She, I think she had six horses. <clears throat> so then it was up to her friends and the amazing people at the barn she was at to help disperse her horses to the right people. And Gracie came to me. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, there wasn't, I don't, I don't know if you, I don't think you could pigeonhole this, this type of stuff, type of stuff into too much affection, not enough groundwork kind of thing. I think it's just not enough groundwork. That's all. You can never give too much affection to a horse, I don't believe, but it has to be balanced. So I guess if you're saying, was there an imbalance? I'd probably say, yeah, because there was no groundwork. <laughs> Um, I don't even know if there was a lot of affection. So I was never there. I never met her. I never met this lady. Uh, she had the, the lady herself had tried to get a hold of me a few months for no, probably about six months before uh, I had heard that she'd passed away and they were considering Gracie come to me. So never met her. Um, but she had considered uh, having Gracie come to me because she knew herself that she wasn't able to do uh, the things that she'd like to do for her horse and knew that the best life for her would be would be more possible if she was trained up reasonably well and uh there is uh there's a, a meme going around uh, or has been going around for a while now it says the best thing you can do for your horse is give it an education uh and it's so true i was talking to another lady the other day and i said you know it's, it's got a, a horse that's a little bit dangerous it says you know if your horse is dangerous and, and, and it hurts somebody, there's a very good chance that it will get put down. You know, the biggest killer of horses is usually a lack of education. Um, so something to think about, you know, I mean, not, it doesn't make you a bad owner. It doesn't make you a bad person or anything, but um, these, these horses are massive. It's no different than dogs, right? You know, there's always this, train your dog, be good, be a good animal, be polite and kind. So that kind of idea. Okay. Um, Mr. Unknown's talking about Gracie. Yeah, you love Gracie. You, I love her. Too. She's awesome. Somebody said you're going to have a hard time selling her. And I think, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not completely decided about that. The idea was to because she's so small. I don't have a use for her myself. She might be able to work with kids, but it would it be worth it. I didn't know. So the idea is to sell. But she is um, a lovely horse. Very soft, very close, very cuddly, very snuggly, very trusting, very trusting. Um, and smart, so smart, so it's lovely to have. Oh, geez, Teresa, again, you're thank you very much. I very much appreciate. Yeah, I'm gonna have to travel down to wherever you live and train your horse for free if you want it. I'm not trying to impose myself. <clears throat> okay, um, why don't encourage your horse to eat while you ride, not even for a treat? I do. Uh, maybe I haven't shown it in videos, but many, many times. Uh, I'll have a trail uh, path, I'll have a, uh, I'll have a ride planned out. And along the trail, I know there's patches of grass or, or, or something where they can just nibble and stuff. <clears throat> and we'll go there and they can eat. Um, one of the benefits actually of, of going bitless is that it's very easy for the horse to eat. Um, and I usually try to talk about that a little bit. So if you've been thinking that I don't encourage them to eat, I actually do because I do believe Oh, actually, here's a video you can watch. It's the one with Lily. Um, I think I did it on the 360 channel. If you look for the ride with Lily, I'm pretty sure I say in there um, that it's nice to get Lily out. And here's an opportunity to reward her for being with me and being quiet and kind. I'll let her munch a little bit. And then when I feel like I'm ready to go, I'll ask her up and then we'll go on. So it's actually a very common thing for me to do is to let a horse eat while riding, but not during the riding part. There's, um, you know, the breaks that I determine. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, your dogs are looking at the computer, looking for the squeaky toy. Ooh, you want this one? Ugh. It's actually torn up too. He just got the head open today. I don't know if you guys are able to see that. But... Good job, buddy. Moving on. 
Everybody's got dogs, eh? Four chihuahuas. Four chihuahuas? Wow. Sounds like fun. Um, you're glad I'm wearing blue? All the pink stuff you have makes one worried? All of the pink stuff I have uh, is because of the girls. They, um, they think it's hilarious to give me pink cups, pink shoes. Uh, I don't think I have any pink shirts or pants or underwear. <laughs> For socks I do I did get some hamburger socks or some kid like socks for Christmas but I gave them away I was like no I'm not I'm not wearing hamburger socks this is silly um but you know it, it's fun the girls love it they, they when they did those uh, crocs they put a whole bunch of little plastic jewels I mean they were probably a hundred on each shoe most of them have fallen off by now they're all over the place uh they like it I like it they like it because you know it's funny I like it because they like it so Am I wearing blue? Yeah, this is a nice color blue, this turquoise. It, um, I like the color. So, all right, moving on. Do you always wash your horse after riding? Nope. Um, I wouldn't say I ride him enough to wash him usually. Maybe in the summertime when it gets really hot. Um, but I don't take my horses out and sweat them out like that. So it wouldn't be needed. I will give them a good brushings. Um, so, good point. You always want to be one step ahead and read a horse before he bites. Yeah, I mean, I, I teach kids this a lot. Um, and adults too. But mostly kids because they're smaller. I say, you know, you need to understand what a horse is doing, what they're thinking, what they're going to do. If you have an understanding of what they might do, you might be able to anticipate something happening. If you can anticipate something happening, you can prepare for it but if not you just are not prepared and then squish you know something happens <clears throat> yeah gracie's gorgeous yeah she's a good looking horse i'm probably way back on the comments here but um that makes sense it's by releasing pressure or rewarding the effort that horses know they did right um yes uh the the pressure is there to block something that you don't want. As soon as you stop blocking or stop asking something, they'll sort of clue into that. And if you then further reassure them, they actually have enough understanding and memory because there's a lot of studies on horses, thoughts, thought process and stuff. <gasps> the mailman's here. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay. Ooh, I've been waiting all morning for this. Okay. Finally. I don't know if I can wait. Should I open it on there? Ha! New cord. Uh, the last cord that I had that I was doing my live stream with the microphone, the remote microphone, um, it broke. It stopped working. But the one time that it did work, I found that it, you know, worked really well. So I had to buy a new one. It's come today. It's a higher quality one. It's actually by Sennheiser. Sennheiser, Hazer. Anyways, exactly what I need. But that's not the really exciting thing. Whew. Oh, one of the pages is wrecked. There. Is anybody else out there that does not dog ear their books? 
My pages is wrecked, remember? I never dog ear a book anymore. I used to when I was younger. And now I keep them in good shape. Uh, I've been waiting to pick up this book for a little while now. It's called Equitation Science. I'm a science maniac. And I kind of like horses. Um, this is the second edition. So uh, I'm going to read this. Prepare for a full and comprehensive review of Equitation Science book. A lot of good authors in here. Good stuff. Okay, moving on uh, wherever I was. Releasing pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Danielle says, good explanation. My experience has been to pay attention and anticipate his action before he does it. Even if he takes one for the team. Yeah. So even reward their compliance to your punishment. Um... I try very hard to never uh, punish, I guess you could say. Or at least think of it like that. It may appear that way or it may sort of be that way. You know, I'm not going to say I don't of any sorts whatsoever. If a horse is dangerous enough for getting in my space and they haven't listened to all the requests that I've made. Which brings up another thing. Um, if a horse is going to do something to you and you've said no, 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 and you're getting bigger and louder and they're still not listening, well, then there is a point to be made to them a little bit more strongly, no different than any other horse would do. And I can guarantee you, unless you've got some kind of battering ram or hydraulic, you know, piston of some sorts, you're never going to hurt a horse as much as another horse, another horse can, um, you know, uh, but you can, you can get them pretty worried. And if they respond, if, I can, and it's true and it's weird and I know it's it's kind of hard to it, it may not make a lot of sense based on traditional teaching and stuff but if you tell a horse to get out of your space because they're in your space and they do it you must say thank you you must reward by letting off pressure reassuring them they did the right thing because um, otherwise how are you going to teach them anything you know you have to be uh, consistent. So, yes. So even rewarding their uh, compliance um, to what I ask for, it just goes hand in hand. So that's what horsemanship. That's why horsemanship is so hard because you have to bring yourself back down as fast as you came up. You have to be, you know. So say a horse comes in and they're coming in too close and they step on my foot. I'm like, ow, and I get all wild. If they back up, I'll be like, huh, thanks, man. Thanks for backing off my foot because that really hurt. Um, it doesn't mean they've done it on purpose. If they have, then I'll probably very lightly, I won't go up and hug them and tell them they're an amazing horse for attacking me. Um, but I will say, I will try to reassure them that they've done the right thing because I have to establish a pattern. And sometimes it starts way back to that scary, scary place where they figure they got to defend themselves at all costs. So... Teresa's, okay, those are out. That makes sense. Correct timing is so important. Correct timing is everything. Um, poor timing will set you back. Uh, so I'm, I, I, I talk a lot with people that are here when I go out and about to my appointments. Um, I am constantly talking about timing. And I'm usually saying, stop, 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 pet him, stop, pet him. <laughs> And uh, sooner or later, it gets better, you know, so it's all good. <clears throat> have you watched Listening to the Horse Online? Nope, I have not. Um, oh, wait, sorry. Angela says, there's nothing wrong with tiring your horse for a few hours to teach patience. I use a patience pole. <sighs> Tying a horse for a few hours to teach patience. Um, that's a hard one to respond to. Passive training. YouTube finally crashed. That's nice. <laughs> um, tying a horse for a few hours to teach patience. I don't believe it teaches patience. Because horses can stand around no matter what. <clears throat> it might teach them to tie. Um, 
but teaching a horse to tie is different than just tying them up for a few hours. So I'm not sure what you mean. I'm not saying it's bad or good or whatever. I just don't quite understand. So uh, I don't believe that tying them for hours teaches them patience. So that might be a difference of opinion. Maybe. It's okay. Have you watched listening to the horse online? No, I uh, haven't. I've seen the ads for it. And if you give me your email address, they'll send you a link to go watch it. But I haven't. I don't have a lot of time usually. <laughs> I'd like to. If there's a lot of people in there, you know, some I agree with, some I don't. Uh, for these horsemen and horsewomen in the movie, that's cool. I like listening to lots of um, different opinions and stuff. So I'll check it out when I can. I hope. <clears throat> All right. Because you've been saying that when Lena wants scratches, I've been paying more attention to my boys and they are asking for this spot and that spot. Horses can be very specific. Um, you could touch them. You could just be reaching for a spot and they'll move their head just a little, you know, or you'll be scratching something and they'll, you know, it's no different than somebody scratching your back and you, you just adjust a little bit. <laughs> Can you get the middle? You know, so the more you pay attention to it, the better they get at telling you and you get it. It's fun. It's, it's more fun than anything. So, um, so that's cool. Okay. Where am I? I, um, <laughs> Chrissy Lee says, I surprised my horse with my hand by her face once and she instinctively turned to bite, but she caught herself when she realized it was me and didn't bite. She was so submissive the rest of the day. Can you describe submissive for me when you have a minute? If you're still there, Chrissy Lee. Um, it's true. Yes, actually, I have uh, regularly uh, sort of come up upon or surprised uh, horses that aren't mine. Mine here, we got a big open space. I, I can't be 200 feet without them spotting me coming down the way. <laughs> Mr. Scritchy Scratchy's coming. Um, and But, you know, other horses that I go and visit and, and whatnot, if I come around a wall and they look, what's that, you know, kind of thing, and they see it's me, they'll give that uh, gesture, I, th I believe is the same thing you're describing, um, where they're like, oh, it's you. Okay, cool. All right. And then they'll come and be drawn or... Um, or at least just stand there. Some walk away, of course. I'm not saying every single horse responds perfectly, but I know what you're talking about. Um, you can very much give them, you know, like, oh, what's that touching me? Could be, you know, a big bug or a branch or whatever, you know. Because they might have been just tuning out. They might have been, I don't know, daydreaming. Do horses daydream? They probably do. Because they dream. So, I don't know. Um, I surprised my horse with my hand. It was a, oh, wait, I already read that. How you reward the horse from far, especially if you try to tell them their space is far from you. Hmm. Um, if you watch, oh, geez, I wouldn't even know where to send you. Okay, so. They've got it. There have to be a few videos that are going to show this. Maybe you've seen it and this will jog your memory. <clears throat> so the horses that are really scary um, and they're really scared, I will have them way out on the end of my lead rope. My lead rope is a 12 foot lead rope. Uh, yeah, 12 foot. Uh, some of them are shorter. Some of them are 8 foot. And I have a client who has a 15 foot kind of thing. It doesn't matter. You can have them all the way out on that lead rope all the way to the end and uh, and they'll just stand there and what I'll do is I'll keep that end in my hand but I'll draw my arm all the way back and I'll reach all the way with my other hand that gives me about almost six feet of reach kind of thing and if I have to take a step or two to get over it I might do that as well but I'll ask them to stay there if they start to come towards me I'll ask them back my reward will be um, being quiet and trying to reach because if you watch horses, uh, a lot of times when their heads are kind of coming, they'll each reach way out before their feet start coming towards. They'll reach and they'll touch and they'll get out maybe, or they'll touch here or they'll, one will reach all the way into the shoulder. Um, and so you're sort of doing that. So my reward would be for a horse that can't, that that doesn't get to be near me um, because my my goal is to be close 
the goal is to be close and in there and able to respond and pet and reassure as fast as I can with as much energy as I can. Energy is in reassuring energy. I don't know how to explain it better than that. Not like energy, like, woo, get your energy up, but everything comes down. So uh, um, if they're a little ways away, um, I'll try to draw while reaching. So um, hopefully, hopefully that makes some sense. I'm sure I've done some videos somewhere where you can see that. Uh, you're glad Sue's glad Gracie came to me. Thank you, Sue. Me too. She's she's a wonderful horse. I think once she has a year or so under your belt, she's going to be an amazing partner. Gracie is coming up on a year. What are we in February? The end of February. So we got March, April, May. We got three months. And she'll be here for a year. Um, her training has, you know, the kind of got we're just a little up and down for a little bit there to get her used to everybody, have her be in the herd get fed regularly, have just a new lifestyle. And so the last month or so, I've been working a lot more with her, as you guys have seen also in the live stream. Um, she's responding very well to all that work. Uh, you know, I've, I haven't ridden her, but I've been on top of her. Um, and uh, so yeah, she's coming along pretty good. It's nice, it's nice. Sue says, if I live closer, I'd consider buying her. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember. Where do you live, Sue? You live in um, California, I think. Can't remember. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know what will happen with her. She'll be up for sale, probably. Just because there's a lack of good use that she would have here that I'm hoping somebody else would have and attention that she would be able to get a little bit more maybe than she would have here. Um, you know, because I get pretty busy with horses that are pretty bothered and stuff and there's been some requests that maybe I try to take in uh, a couple of horses that are uh, really troubled uh, out that the SPCA has or that the SPCA wants to go get kind of idea. So uh, some of these malnourished ones or, you know, untrained and, and really scared. And so we're thinking about that idea as well to rehabilitate them back into normal human lifestyle with horses. So we'll see how that goes. Angela, thank you very, very much. God, the people on this channel are just amazing. Um, thank you. Nancy says, I was told not to let them meet if you're riding. You can ignore that person. I would. I think if, if you're told not to let them meet because they've got a bit in their mouth and sometimes long grass, well, there's this huge fat bird. I think it's a robin. Maybe he's just puffed up uh, eating on the deck. Uh, anyways, uh, if they've got a bit in their mouth and they go to eat long pieces of grass, there's a very good chance that that grass sort of gets wrapped around the bit and stuff like that. And uh, in such a case, they will, um, uh, it, it'll get stuck in there to be really, it won't be very good. So yes, in that case, no, don't let them eat. It's just going to be uncomfortable. Uh, if you're riding bitless, you know, some form, hackamore, side pull, halter, any of those things, I'd say let them eat, but let them eat on your terms. Make sure they're not just indiscriminately eating. Otherwise, you've got a horse that isn't listening. Uh, so that's a problem all by itself. What's Gracie's height? Ooh. We figure she's 14, 3, maybe 15. Don't know, never measure her. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I'll measure her. Okay. Um, you have two great Pyrenees. Wow. Crows? A male's a cross. Oh, cross. Male's a cross. Husky. I love huskies. Um, I had a husky when I was a kid. We couldn't uh, keep them uh, in the end because we were just, it was too difficult. We lived in a townhouse and stuff, but. Adorable dog. Females 200 pounds. You have a 200 pound dog. Whew. Chihuahuas with horse. Any dogs with horses actually usually goes really. Lena hates dogs, so she's actually a great. She's more like a donkey. She just keeps them all away. Um, but uh, macaroni's great with uh, dogs. Luke got worse when he started to follow Lena, but he used to be great. Um, I don't think Gracie cares that much. But since Zeus is such a scaredy cat, I think the horses actually get used to sort of 
pushing them around and stuff. But that's up to you when you're with them. Say, no, don't do that. If they're out liberty doing their own thing, uh, then you're sort of stuck. What you got? <laughs> we should go feed lunch to the boys. Work on another obstacle. I'll watch the rest when I get back. Okay. See you, Danielle. I am staying warm right now, but I'll be out in the cold soon. Yay. Um, a 13 one hand full Arab. She comes from somewhere. Machiavelli MP. Her mother was on fire. Small in utero. Uh, yeah, I mean, some Arabians are really quite small. Um, my biggest concern with the smaller ones, obviously, is I, you know, I'm somewhere around 180 pounds or so. I don't really want to spend a lot of time on a smaller horse um, uh, myself. So my training can actually only go so far with her anyways. <clears throat> and she would need to go to somebody who's lighter. So it's another thought. Six, six-year-old Arab. That's cool. Um, let's see. YouTube crashed again, but I'm able to keep on top of it because I'm sitting right here. K says hello. KK says hello. Hello, KK. Uh, anyone else thinking Blue's Clues, it's mail time? <laughs> it's mail time. Yeah, I can't wait to read this book. I'm really excited. I'll tell you guys all about it. <clears throat> Um, yeah, yep, yep, yep. It is a nice book. You hate dog ears as well. I know, right? I mean, all of the books that I have probably since I was about, oh, I don't know, 18 or so. So a little ways back. Um, uh, none of them. I, I use a bookmark. I don't even crease the, I won't, I won't open the book beyond maybe here either. Like I won't do that and wreck the binding and stuff like that i'll actually just gently sort of sometimes i'm reading it and i'll be going like this trying to try to read what's over there because i don't want to wreck is that a problem i don't know okay moving on i'm glad you caught the live stream well thank you for joining up on the live stream followed your guidance concerning my old mayor she's got a little shutler for company oh good for you well way to go yes absolutely oh man horses love company we know a few horses around us that they don't have any company. They, they have their owner kind of thing. But as humans, we're pretty busy. Um, so they don't have a lot of... Uh, That's great. That's really great. Good for you. Way to go. That's good to hear. Um, her head stayed very low and she was very, very tuned in. By the way, I didn't punish her for that. <laughs> That's good. When horses' heads stay low, we have to think about psychologically and physiologically what happens when their head is low is generally they're sort of half blind. Um, it's it's generally accepted that horses have to raise their head up and do this to be able to see depth uh, so far away, to be able to focus on something that's far away. So when their head is low, they're actually completely giving in to the idea that you're going to pay attention to everything that's far away. That's awesome. Being tuned in is awesome. I think it's amazing. Um, very rewarding. Very, very good. She was a little distracted before that. She started paying close attention. It's almost like she was saying, sorry, I didn't mean that. It's true. Sometimes I do think that once in a while as well. Sometimes Luke will do something I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And he looks at me, he's, oh, I didn't mean to make you, you know, upset. You can see a little bit of the look in his, his eyes or the, the feel. I mean, that's the way I interpret it. Could be wrong, but I agree with you. Uh, what have you decided to do with the horses? Says Nancy. Um... My horses? Do you mean my horses? Okay, moving on. Um, what do you think is the best way to keep a horse calm when it spooks? Establish a really, really good pattern of what you do when you reassure them. Um, so it's almost impossible to deal with a horse that you don't deal with very often for spooking. They spook, they freak out. You're like, well, what do I do for this thing? For ones like that, you have to just distract them. You have to be bigger than the thing that's worrying them. If it's your horse or a horse you regularly work with, um, continue to introduce things that worry them and then reassure them with something. Usually it's some light touches, you know, maybe along the withers, maybe on their face, maybe on their eyes and their ears, all the sensitive spots, they're just nice and soft. Don't, don't smack them and don't say they're really good and all that kind of stuff, but just quiet stuff. So then, when the day comes, and it will, um, they'll be worried, they'll be scared. 
you'll just come along and be like, that's okay, don't worry about that. And you'll pet them and they'll be like, oh. And they'll have more of an association to that. When you're doing that, everything's good. So, Nancy says yes. I don't know what the yes was for, but hopefully for something, something I answered. Beth says, I'm curious how you handle the communication training with your clients, horses. Do you send email updates, video updates, phone, etc.? What sort of human training do you do for the owner? When horses are here, I am constantly sending videos. They're not put, some are put online. Some uh, people allow me to share the stories of their horses and what they're doing. Um, and uh, some, some, uh, some don't care either way or some sort of give me the impression that they, they wouldn't want to share something or other. But, I'll, I have a lot of private videos that are on YouTube that nobody gets to see other than the owner. I send those to them. I say, well, this is my assessment or this is what I've done. This is how your horse got through this. This is the trouble your horse had. Um, <clears throat> I'm constant in, in constant communication. Uh, the owners regularly show up and we'll do things together. I always encourage the owners to be involved. Uh, so, I mean, email updates are kind of good, but I usually do a lot of talking. Uh, or videos and I'll do a direct video. I'll do it just like I'm doing now. Say hello so-and-so I'm here working with your uh, horse and we're going to do some groundwork and I'm going to introduce a tarp maybe or whatever I'm doing or I'm going to go for a ride. Today's a trail ride. We're heading out to whatever park. Um, trailering has gone like this and I'll show a clip of what's happened and then we'll be out in the trail and say here's our trail ride and off we go. Spooked at some water. We made it across the water. That was a lot of you know whatever. So Usually I'll try to come up with uh, um, progress reports like that. But a lot of people don't need a bunch of reports. They don't need to know everything. They're just, yeah, cool, good, keep it up. Um, and then other times it's included into the, uh, the, the videos here. But not always. Um, as for human training for the owner, I will usually try to lead them through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, all the groundwork, all the psychological stuff that I do. And of course, there's over 400 videos here on the channel that I can refer to saying, this is what I do. This is why I do it. Um, so there's that. And a lot of people that have found me are already subscribed to the ideas of what I do. And I'll actually have people just say, yeah, yeah, cool. Just, just do what you do. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, what is the best? Oh, yeah, I already answered that. Um, training a horse is the easy part. Training a human is the hardest part. You have to develop a feel and timing, learning so much. I bet horses think the same thing. I bet they're like, God, why is this human so slow? And it's me. <laughs> I have a very close connection to my 16 hands high horse. He always spooks at the fence for some reason. I have no clue why. Um, well, you know, keep working at it. Don't worry about the why. Uh, it actually doesn't matter. You can ask yourself these questions all day long. Why, why spook at a box? Why the tarp? Why a bag? Why the stick? Why that branch? Why that noise? Why whatever? Bottom line is they're, they're, they fear for their life. They'd like to stay alive. Um, so you have to just solve that. You know, reassure them, make them feel good. Um, Nancy says, for my 200 pounds female dog. 200 pounds is a lot of pounds. It's heavier than I am. Uh, Debbie says, uh, what's your favorite horse you've ever worked with? Nope, wasn't Mama the Frisian. Keep guessing. Guess one more, Debbie. I'm pretty sure you'll get it. You've been around long enough to guess which horse is my favorite to work with. I think you'll guess it. Guess, guess an older one than that. You'll get it. You were around. You were watching. But I'll tell you in a couple minutes. No, it's not Luke. Luke's mine. Luke's a pain in the butt, spoiled brat. But I, if you mean, if you mean um, favorite horse of mine, uh, yes, you got it, Debbie. You got it. Benny. Uh, if anybody's curious as to who Benny is, just look up the um, playlist of standard breads or just do a, do a search for Benny on this channel and you'll find all my, all my Benny videos. 
But yes, Nancy, actually, the truth of the matter is, if I were to pick which horse is my favorite to work with of mine, I would say Lena. Um, she is, she is really, really neat. I mean, I love Luke and Gracie's fun and Macaroni's got his own totally different feel that he's, he's awesome at Liberty stuff. He pays attention. He's great. But something about Lena just really, really strikes me as, as, um, interesting. Uh, she's got some scare to her. So I get to work her through that stuff. She's very trusting. She's huge. So there's a real, like, cool factor to that, I guess you could say. Um, and, uh, but she's very strong. She's a very strong personality. I really enjoy that. So of my own horses, I'd say Lena's pretty close first. Um, Luke's been great, uh, but, you know, and, and we really get each other, but it's not really, I don't find it a lot of challenge to work with Luke anymore. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I don't know if I need a challenge, but yeah, I definitely enjoy Lena. So thanks for time, Dennis. Time. Thanks for taking the time to ask the question. I don't feel like I need to micromanage my horse's trainer like some horsey folks thinks I should. Um, <laughs> I could easily do horse yoga. She's got the perfect butt for it. Yeah, that's true. She's a big girl. Um, micromanaging your, your horse trainer, uh, if you feel like you need to, you might have the wrong person. Maybe. Um, managing a horse trainer is hard. And <clears throat> every horse trainer gets fired from working with somebody's horse. Because the technique isn't working, the, the skill that they have isn't working, the way they're doing things isn't working, the amount that they're getting done isn't working. It's, it's pretty owner specific. So, you know, lining up a horse with a trainer, with an owner, with a trainer um, can be very hard. I wouldn't say, you know, you shouldn't micromanage. I mean, I suppose if you felt you needed to, but I'd say if you felt like you need to, well, maybe, I don't know, hard to say. Um, but I think there's nothing wrong with being heavily involved. And if you've got a trainer that's like, no, look, can you back off? Because I, I just want to work with your horse alone. Um, then that doesn't work for the partnership that you have with, you'd like with your horse or something. I don't know. It's such a big topic, so. Uh, anyway, so I've, I've, I've tried to, <laughs> um, answer that first question. The first 25 minutes of this whole live stream was literally answering that one question about, um, biting. It encompassed so many things. It was very important to cover, I think. And I never would have done it if I had to type it out properly. So, um, who was that person? That was, um. Bria. Yeah, her name's Bria. So, uh, you know, don't be stumped. You know, for everybody out there that sort of comes across something that, you know, gives you a lot of trouble and you're really not sure what to do, uh, it's okay to not know what to do. I'd say go back to the basics at all times. Um, <clears throat> every, every week I teach a basic exercise. And maybe I'll do that today. Because I haven't done the second part of my video today. I did a horsey check and... Then I got a bunch of stuff done, and now I'm doing this live stream, which wasn't supposed to go for this long, but it is. Um, but I think maybe for the second part of the video, I will talk about what an, uh, a very basic exercise that you could do for any case. So for everybody out there that's having trouble with a horse that's biting, that's fidgeting, that's pawing, that's doing whatever, um, you know, there is a basic exercise that I teach that I think is very uh, effective, and it builds confidence for both you and the horse and gives you hundreds of opportunities essentially of rewarding the uh, the effect of what you're asking for. And it's quiet and you can do it in lots of spaces. So for me, it ticks off a lot of boxes. It's a really cool exercise. Um, and it's small, small and relatively easy. Gracie might make a good endurance horse. It's true, she might, yeah. She does have a lot of energy. Debbie, thank you very much. Yes, Jen is feeling a little bit better. Um, she's, uh, she's no longer got a fever for one. And uh, uh, still pretty stuffed up and, and coughing, though. So, I mean, it's passing. There's uh, something going around here that uh, people are staying sort of stuffed up and <clears throat> out of sorts for a couple of weeks or so. Sort of hangs on, sort of lingers. So, 
anyhow, um, I think uh, I think we're good. I think that was that's pretty good uh, live stream this time around. I'm gonna limit it at around an hour there, otherwise I just end up talking forever, and I've got a million things to do. So um, I'm off. Um, yeah, Jen's a little under the weather where she was on the weekend when she was helping out with the uh, live stream for doing uh, Lena's hooves. Um, she doesn't usually get very sick, but yeah, she was out of it for a day or two there and now she's bouncing back. So thanks Debbie. Oh, last question maybe. Do all the horses you show uh, belong to you? Uh, I have four horses and any other horse you've seen does not belong to me. Uh, so we have Macaroni, who's a quarter horse, Gracie, who's an Arabian, Lena, who is a uh, alleged draft cross Oldenburg, and Luke, who is an alleged appendix. They're all, uh, they're all mine. I noticed your hay bags are on the ground. I have mine about two feet off the ground. My horses are barefoot. Should I lower them? Uh, sure, let's answer this one. <clears throat> And she asks, it's a good question, hay bags. I've done a few videos on hay bags. If you, but without going around searching those out. Um, um, you have to consider um, the horse's biological need to eat with their head down. Um, Two feet off of the ground isn't bad, for sure. I'm not saying I'm not saying what you're doing is wrong at all. So, I will just give you some idea, uh, and then you can make a decision. Sometimes our our hay bags are two feet off the ground as well, one foot off the ground. Sometimes they're on the ground, um, but we'll never they'll never be chest height kind of thing. Uh, or I mean, I guess it depends on how big your horse is. Um, we try not to put them up high, especially not sort of up here level, down this level of chest would probably be okay. If if you think about how the jaw works on the horse to, um, you know, look look around a little bit on, on the, the TMJ of the horse and how, even our own, um, when the horse's head is downwards, just like ours actually as well, it just so happens. Uh, and if you get the opportunity to talk to a vet or uh, an equine dentist, uh, I've talked to both. My vet is an equine dentist, and I've talked to a guy who's uh, a specialist at this huge convention clinic thing that I went to a couple of years back. <clears throat> and we chitty chatted about the idea of how this all works and why. Um, horses that eat up high have two problems. One, usually they get um, sinus problems. Usually they'll get dust, a lot of dust in their nose problems. Um, and the other problem is they'll get improper, very improper wear of their teeth. Uh, horses were built and have grown for so long to have their face down. When your chin, and you may even notice it yourself, when you go down, your chin, the bottom, your lower jaw will actually come forward. Same with the horse. So when they're eating with their head down, it's much, much healthier for their whole jaw and the wear of their teeth if they're eating with their head like this, not like that. Horses that eat like this or even like that, like giraffes, um, usually end up having infections, respiratory problems, because um, you see them. There's people that hang hay bags up really high because they're worried that their horse will paw them because uh, they have shoes on and the shoe will catch the hay bag and they'll pull a shoe or worse, they'll pull down whatever structure they're connected to. So that's always a risk, barefoot or not, of them pulling down a hay bag. Um, so, uh, you know, that's what I would consider when I think about how high to put a hay bag, is that we don't want any respiratory problems. There's always going to be dust and hay unless you completely soak it. Um, and there, there will always be, either way, there will always be the concept about how they wear their teeth and how their jaw sits while they're eating. So um, the lower the better, usually, in that regard. 
but I'm not going to say that two feet is a bad idea. Um, you know, so you can make your own decision on that, I hope. <laughs> no offense, but I think you're gaining weight. Thank you. That's awesome. I don't know, are you sure? I don't know, I hope so, you know. In the summertime, I get pretty slim. In the winter time, I get a little bit, you know, I eat a little more maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even care. Um, so no offense taken. Thank you, DJ. Jimmy says I look great. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm not worried. Not worried. You're welcome, Nancy, for the live stream. Uh, it's been, uh, you're joking. I actually feel it a little myself. So if you weren't joking, I'd be totally cool. But anyways, I, I, I say it all the time. I'm like, oh, Jim, I have too many cookies. Cause you know, I eat a lot of cookies. Anyways, um, we all do in Canada, winter fat. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm eating a chocolate pudding while drinking a tea, sitting around on a big puffy chair, chitty chatting to, you know, so it's, I'll be out there soon. Um, Leslie has a question. All right, let's do this. Uh, a friend's horse I'm trying to help train keeps getting cracks and says, what would you say? That's Chrissy. Chrissy, you're not Leslie. Chrissy, tell your friend to get a better trimmer. Um, send me some pictures if you'd like. The email address is on the website, my website. StableHorseTraining.com. Find me there. Um, if you if if you want, if you don't want, it's fine. Cool. Don't worry about it. Uh, I can make a better assessment, but mostly cracks happen in horses' hooves because they are flaring. Then they are flaring because they're not time trimmed in a timely manner, um, or not maintained properly. So cracks happen because the hoof is not being maintained correctly. So I would suggest um, more timely trims or and or uh, better trims. So Abby a Ranch, you did miss a lot. We've been at this for an hour. Check out the recorded version. When the horses pee in the stall mats, they lean too low. How do you clean it? Or, or in their lean to, how do you clean it? Usually with a hose, uh, all of our, um, if a barn is built correctly, uh, all of the stalls will have a grade to them. Uh, they usually won't have a drain in there because the drain would just plug up, but all of them will have some kind of grade to them. All of our stalls have, uh, stalls, all of our uh, shelters have um, a grade or a pooling point. And underneath of our underneath our mats is about this much of drainage rock. Uh, so if they do pee, uh, they that will go into the seam of the uh, mats and just drain away. If we needed to clean it up, we just take the hose and wash it down in hours, and it goes to that low point and drains away. So we thought about that a long time ago too. In a barn, if you're in a stall, usually if it's built correctly. <clears throat> um, the cement will be built on a grade when you go to hose it or clean it out it should wash the water out the stall and into the central drain of the barn so yeah oh it's winter yeah it is winter for instance does a pea freeze and become slippery or freeze as ice in the morning well, you know, if it doesn't drain fast enough, then yeah, it's going to freeze. So I think it comes down to if, if, if horse is in a stall, they're probably going to have shavings, which is why people use shavings. If it's just mats, um, I'd be a little bit surprised if it froze in the barn with a horse sitting in a stall. But like I said, uh, unless the you you must be able to create an environment for the horse to be in that the pee doesn't pool. If it's pooling redo your stall or lean to so that it at the very least all of our all of our um uh shelters the grade is always away from the food so you've seen our hay bags they're up against the wall 
will grade the drainage rock underneath to go away from the food because some horses will pee a lot in their shelters. Um, and so that must drain away. And usually our drain point also has a bunch of rock underneath it. And so it just goes into there. And then it, if it freezes in there, who cares, right? So <clears throat> um, outside where the, yeah. What about the, in the winter? So yeah. Um, so yeah, for the outside, um, you 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 can't you can't stop them from peeing and pooing in whatever spot unless somehow you train them. Um, more than anything, I would say, for example, Lena's very tidy. She just goes off to a corner. Vincent's very tidy. He goes off to a corner. Luke is the worst. He just poops and pees anywhere he wants. Um, for example, Gracie's pretty tidy. Macaroni's very tidy. You know. Um, so, but if it's a shelter situation, you have control over that. If it's a footing, you know, I would say most often a grade is very helpful um, to just help it run instead of pool. So hopefully that'll that'll sort of help. Um, Chrissy says one crack goes up almost to the coronet band and it worries me. I stopped working him because of it. I'll send pics. Yeah, send me a, a picture. You know, when when taking hoof pictures, try to take it from as level as possible. Try not to take a, a downward picture. Take it level with the hoof so your camera is facing this way um, from the front, from the side. And if you can get one from the bottom, that's helpful too. Um, and I would guarantee, I can pretty much guarantee the hoof is shaped uh, like that and not like that. So if the top is the coronet band here and this is the ground, I bet the hoof looks like that or like that. And it's cracking through uh, stress. So your Lexi's like Luke. Yeah, if I didn't love Luke so much, man, I, he would be, I'd get rid of that boy. I tell you, he's messy. Uh, yeah, hoof cracks are a big deal. Um, you have to get on top of it. It has to be dealt with because it hurts them. They hurt. Um, it's a guarantee. It's no different than if you cracked your fingernail and you started pulling one side and then the other. That that pressure of the hoof wall coming off of the inside um, causes scar tissue. We call it keratin, but essentially it's scar tissue. And um, it's protecting between the inside and the outside. And then it creates this big wedge in there that just causes it to continue going. It has to be dealt with. It has to be dealt with. So, anyways, hopefully that helps everybody. I got to get back to work. It's 1.30. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thanks for uh, joining me this on, on, on this uh, this live stream. Uh, you put on winter pounds too. I don't know if I weigh much more here in the winter. Maybe. Doesn't matter. I keep very busy, so I have no shortage of burning calories opportunities. Or Zeus, for that matter. Um, to finish this off again, I will uh, definitely be talking about this if you guys have the opportunity to check this out. Highly recommend it so far. Um, super scientific, from my understanding. Um, so, I like that a lot. Anyways, so thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate all the comments, all the compliments, all the questions, and um, and uh, I hope you guys have a good morning, afternoon, evening, night, sleep, wherever you are on the planet right now. It's amazing. I'm going to have a good day, and uh, I'll do that. I think it's the next step I'll take today once I make sure everything's cool outside, being inside for an hour and a half. Um, I'll uh, do that exercise that I'm talking about in regards to um, being able to get a horse to just chill out with you and how I might do that. So, be interesting. Okay, thanks everybody again. Uh, no more questions. We're good. Everybody says thank you. You're very welcome. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Oh, when's next live? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um... 
maybe um, maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, maybe Sunday. Um, trying to think of everything we got going on. So it's it's so random. I really do want to schedule it. I'm trying to think about how to do that. I was thinking about Mondays and Thursdays. So, but then I have to figure out times too because everybody's on different times. So I'll figure it out. Okay, guys. Thanks again. I will. Uh, I'll see you guys again.